Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going in round in circles with the crochet wall hanging today. But before we begin, let's listen to this real quick. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So let's take a close look at the pattern today and we have a whimsical wall hanging. It's not too big, it's 28 inches and I'll show you another photo in a sec to give you an indication of size. And you're going to see that each one of the circles are the same and it's using the Bernat Super Value yarn. So it's a yarn that uh, actually works out really quite easily to work with. So what we're gonna have is then you're gonna have tassels and then I'm gonna have Mary Beth at the end of today's video explain to you how to do tassels but the information on how to do it and how many pieces that you'll need in order to do it will be over here as well in the instructions. But I'll have Mary Beth explain that to you at the end of the tutorial but use this set of instructions for just substituting for what is she's going to show you visually on how to do this step. So it's actually really kind of a neat concept. So you have all the circles joining together. They're joined at the end. So you can do all your circles in advance and you can do your tassels in advance and then sew them together. But I wanna show you a photograph of what this looks like and then I have a sample already sam uh, sewn just a mini sample and then I wanna show you uh, from that point what you're gonna get yourself into today. So here's a photograph of Nicole and Julia. And Nicole is one of the designers. She is a smart cookie, honest to God. When you get with her, you just laugh and she's so much fun to be with. And she is exceptionally smart with math. I really love her. She's very informal and just a lot of fun. And if you've been doing any of the crochet patterns with me on tutorial format or if any suggestions that I've talked about with your inspirations in the past couple of years, chances are you've done one of Julia's designs. So you can see that in behind is the actual item uh, uh, coming up and there's going to be a live broadcast uh, actually with showing all the different ideas that are in this book and most of the uh, patterns have been available in tutorial format probably by the time you see this. And Julia I also work with too. She's in responsible for communications with me with the Yarn Inspirations and I love these girls. They're actually a lot of fun and uh, this uh, picture comes ac across to me with lots of smiles because I really respect both of these women. So you can get a good indication of the size of what you're looking at in the back. It's not too huge. A great accessory and it's a lot of fun. So let me take you a little bit back to the pattern and I'm gonna show you some more little tidbits of information. So on screen now is a diagram of what this looks like and here's the actual sample done. I wanna point out a few things that I noticed that may help you. You will notice if you zoom in real quick on this and you can do that also on your inspirations when you're looking at this pattern, you will notice that all the slip stitching uh, are facing the same direction. They're all in the down direction. So you might wanna be strategic when you're sewing these to make sure you're paying attention to that because it makes it look more uh, more authentic when you're actually uh, paying attention to that. It flows better. So what you're gonna be noticing is that I thought, you know what, Nicole designed this thing. There's gotta be a rhyme and reason for attaching these things. So I did a zoom in real close to see what she did. And I noticed that the tops, when they're on the top, so if it's top to top to top to top joining, it's always joining with only three back loops. And then when I noticed when it was side to side, so side, 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 she's joining with four loops. And I thought to myself, why is she doing that? So I did the math for you. <laughs> and it turns out if you join three at the top and then leave nine empty and then join along the side for another four and then leave nine empty and then join three, leave nine empty and join four and leave nine empty, you end up with the perfect circle to be able to attach. So let me show you an example of this right here and here is what it looks like. It looks like Mickey Mouse at this point. So what I have here is that these are the uh, uh, circles. So what I uh, told you uh, when I was doing this is that you just wanna be strategic about joining these as you go and you're going to be joining them at the end. So you can do all your circles in advance and then at the end you just gotta pay attention. So you just gotta commit to what is up and down. So if this was, uh, if this was gonna be up, then this join here would be three joining and then on the sides here it would be joining with four strands. When you go to join, you wanna join with the back loop only so that you end up with a nice clean crisp line just like so. So you don't wanna go right over top of both stitches just into the back loop only. And this is what it looks like in the back as well. So it's actually not a hard pattern to be able to do. You just gotta be strategic. And then at the top of this, we also have some ties. So once you get it all sewn together, you're just gonna make the ties. That information is just chain 13 and then you're gonna um, just um, 
uh, be able to just uh, make a little chain and feed it through and then you can put it onto a dowel or anything that you wish and then you just attach it to the top section of each one of these group and then you can just let it go and then you can do the uh, tassels then at the bottom and just attach those to the very base as well and again at the end of today's tutorial I'll have Mary Beth explain how to do the tassels but make sure you're following the information then on uh, on the pattern with how many uh, revolutions you need to do about your cardboard. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna start off with the circle and the circles are all the same. So using a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and using your Bernat Super Value, I'm actually using a Bernat Fashion uh, or Bernat Maker Home Deck yarn instead and I just thought it'd be kind of a fun addition to be able to do it. So again if you're gonna substitute just make sure it's gonna match so that you can match it fine. So match it with the hook I mean. So you're going to then start off with the slip knot and you're going to slide that onto your hook and then we're going to then do a total of, of chaining of three. So one, two and three. So we might as well start the first round as we go and we're going to put ten half double crochets in the third chain from the hook. So way down here. So wrap that hook first going into the first chain pull through and then pull through all three loops and that's one half double crochet. So what you wanna do is that you wanna go in to the end and continue to do this. So this is number two and I might as well do this whole thing with you right now. This is three, this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So now I have 10 and what I want to do is just join it to the top of the first half double crochet that I started with with a slip knot or a slip stitch and then that's the interior of the circle. So let's move along to round number two. So going forward in today's tutorial I'm going to give you the starting instructions for the round and then have you do the round and then meet you at the end and so there will be a stitch stop break in between so that you can stay caught up with me today. You're going to chain two and remember it says in the pattern it does not count as a half double crochet so it's more of a builder. So whenever we start these we're chaining two doesn't count as anything it's a builder. So we're gonna put two half double crochets in each of the stitches all the way around. So just coming right down to the one that is in the join where you joined it before and you're gonna put in two half double crochets in each stitch. Make sure you wrap that hook first into each stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna leave that with you and put in two half double crochets in each and I'll see you at the end of this revolution. When you get all the way back around just slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet that you started with and that was round number two. Let's begin immediately to round number three. So we're gonna progressively get bigger as the circles get bigger. So let's do round three. We're gonna chain two, doesn't count as anything and we're gonna half double crochet into the first one that has the join. So here's the repeat pattern for all of this. So the next one is gonna have two half double crochets into the same one. So go one and two and then the next one is gonna be one half double crochet by itself. Okay, so let me just show you that repeat once again. So the next one is gonna be two half double crochets into the same one and the next one is gonna be one by itself. Please do that all the way around for round number three. As you conclude round number three the last stitch will have two half double crochets in it and that's just because I'm following the pattern so I'm not doing anything special to make that happen and then you just join it to the beginning half double crochet. So that was round number three. So you can see it's looking great so far. So let's move on to round number four. We might as well get this done and we're going to chain up two. Doesn't count as anything and now the first two are going to be half double crochets sitting by themselves. So just go right into the one that you did the join with and then the next one is a half double crochet as well. Now here's the repeat pattern. The next one is gonna have two half double crochets into it and then the next two are gonna be one half double crochet by itself. Okay, so just let's reiterate the next one has two and then the next two are just one by itself. So please do that all the way around for round number four and you're almost done your circles for today. I'm coming up to the end of round number four and I'm following the pattern and the very last stitch will be two half double crochets and that's just because I'm following the pattern as I already talked about. So let's just join that to the top of the first half double crochet. So let's do the fifth round. This is the final round and uh, we're going to chain up two again. So one and two and then in the first three stitches they're gonna be one half double crochet each. So one 
and do another one in the next one and another one in the next one. So there's three sitting by themselves and guess what? The fourth is having two in there. So we'll put two into this one. So the repeat pattern for this one is three half double crochets by itself. So one and two and three and then the next one has two half double crochets sitting to the same one. Please do that all the way around for round number five. So let's finish round number five together and then just follow in the pattern as stated and the last stitch is gonna have two half double crochets in there and then that's it. So slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet and you're done. But here's a tip. You might as well cut this string to be extra long so that you can use it as a sewing string later. So you can just, just pull it through the loop and save it. Okay and what you can just do is work through your project and make all the circles that you need and then you can have one strand already attached to this thing and then any other strands that you need to attach you can just make fresh but it's kind of easier to have one that's already done. So I'm going to take you just to re-demonstrate how to do the joining and I'll see you there in just a moment. So here's the color scheme provided in the pattern if you want to follow this exactly or maybe you wanna use your own creativity and figure out something else. Maybe you wanna do a different shape completely. That's up to you. You could actually make it go down like a, a point at the base too. So it's kind of a neat idea and you're going to want to attach things together. So I have another diagram that I wanna show you here and I'm just reaching across. So whenever you're joining circles and they're on the tops, the top three are going to join to the next one on top. And when it's on the bottom, the, to the top three and the bottom three attach together. When it's being attached to the side, it's gonna be four. And when it's going to the other side, it's gonna be four. And what you're gonna have is you're gonna have nine single crochets that are left untouched on all sides when you follow this particular uh, scheme. So let's uh, get your darning needle and show you how to attach. So let's show you how to attach. I know it's black and it's hard to see. So I told you that there was nine empty single crochets in between the joining. So the easiest way to do it for me as what I would assume is that you leave nine empty spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that's gonna be the ninth. So the tenth, eleven, and twelve. The twelfth one is gonna be the one you're going to join. So just turn this here and I want you to go to the back loop only of that stitch. Okay, so if don't go to both of the strands, just go to the back loop only and just go straight across and drag through that strand that you left that is on the end of the other circle and pull it up. Now going around the back loop only for the strand, just going in the back loop only. So don't go through both, just go to the back loop only. It makes it nice and clean is that I want you to go through that same one again in the back loop on the other side. Okay, and pull everything nice and uh, snug. So now jump to this first one here, the back loop only. Now I'm gonna classify this as going in the up direction that I'm looking up. So I'm only gonna attach three times. So this is number two and then I'm gonna jump to the next one, the back loop only and the back loop only of the next one. Keeps it nice and clean looking and I have attached. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna dive down through to the back side and I'm gonna drag that yarn with me to the back side. Make sure nice, nice and snug and then all I'm just going to do then is that I'm gonna drag that yarn through some of the sections in behind so it doesn't pop out the front. So just going through. So I'm gonna go through once. I'm gonna go through twice. and the best way to do it is to go through three times. Okay, so I'm going in different paths each time and that prevents it from ever falling out. So now I'm just gonna trim down that. I might as well get rid of the center out while I was there and then I have this. So now I can see that I've attached. So what I'm gonna do at this particular point is that you wanna commit to your colors that are being attached but now you want to go over here. So I'm gonna use the remaining of that strand. I'm gonna create a slip knot. This is my own thought process. So what I want to do is remember we talked about it so that there's nine empties and this is gonna be the tops and bottoms. So this is side, side. So there's gonna be four attachments here. So let's uh, just do that. So I wanna skip nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Go to the tenth. 
back loop only. Okay, so where do we go on this side? We have to count it. I know it's hard to see on there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So go to the 10th one and go directly across. But what I wanna do is that I wanna take this loop and pull it through and put that straggler to the other side and then just go to the next one and the next one on this side. Back loops only. And then go to the next one. So this is side to side so they're gonna attach four times. So you notice I'm trying to trap this starting straggler into position on top and go one more time. This is the fourth join. And now I'm just gonna put it down through the back end so I can secure it on the back side. My darning needles are really sharp. It actually kind of scares me. <laughs> so, okay. So we're just gonna come through the back, make sure everything's nice and tight. Just check into the front and come into the back. And all I'm just gonna do now is that I'm just gonna drag that yarn through some sections on the back side only so it doesn't pop out the other side. So if I see that needle coming to the other side or I feel it, then I know I'm too deep. So I wanna make sure that I'm doing a good job with that. This is the starting strand. So that was in there once. I'm gonna go again twice and then I'm gonna go again three times. Three times is the charm. So then I can just trim my yarns now and then both are attached. So what I would probably recommend to you is that, let me just back up the camera here. So what I'd recommend is that you do all of your circles just like you see it here and then just uh, then start sewing them together when you have some spare time and then just be consistent about how you're attaching it and everything would be good to go. Once you're done with that, you're going to make your ties. The ties are just uh, using the same uh, yarn color that you want. You just take it and you just start up and you want to um, start up a chain. So let's just uh, pretend that we're gonna do that. So let's insert the hook in. So let's chain uh, right here. It says chain 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 and all you just wanna do is that you want to count out, remember what it was, it was nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and it was empty and then the top three were the joints so go into the, so skip the next one. So 10 and 11, go to the 11th and you wanna slip stitch it to that point. Slip stitch it right there. Okay. And then all you're just going to do then is that you're going to chain 13 again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you have 13 and all you're just gonna do is cut your yarn now. Just cut your yarn and just pull through. And you, what you wanna do is you wanna pull it nice and tight so that is kinda like tied onto itself. Pull the other one nice and tight and then you can just safely trim that down. And then these will be the ties that hold your item to the top dowel. So you can just tie it nicely around the dowel at the top if you want to, but it's completely up to you and that's how you would do that. So let's uh, just uh, now go off to the tassel area. I will talk about it real quick and then I'll show you a tutorial featuring Mary Beth. So in the next part of this tutorial, you're going to make tassels and you're gonna have to make one for each one of the sections. There happens to be six, there's two of every color that you want to. Again, that is completely up to you. So you're going to wrap your yarn around a seven inch piece of cardboard and in the next part of this tutorial, I'm gonna show uh, you with Mary Beth on how she's doing that and then you can just cut then across the uh, edges here and make sure you put your strand of string in there before you do so and then you're just gonna use some other string and just wrap it around in order to form your tie and then you're just gonna use these two strands then to secure it to the bottom of your wall hanging. So let me, without further ado, let me take you on to Mary Beth now and that's it for me today. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Hey there and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. Let's talk tassels, specifically the glorious fat tassel that we're going to attach to the Keep It Simple Knit Super Scarf. I used Burnett Roving and following the instructions in the pattern, 
I cut a piece of cardboard that was 10 inches tall. Now the width doesn't matter a whole lot, but you want it wide enough that the tassel while you're making it doesn't fall off the side. So wider is better, width doesn't really matter. To get started, all I'm going to do is pull my yarn out of the skein and I'm going to hold it at the bottom of the cardboard with my thumb. It doesn't matter if it hangs off a little bit, we can trim that up later. And now I'm going to wrap it 60 times according to the pattern. Now I don't want to pull super tight because if I do that, it's going to shorten up a little bit when the yarn snaps back and I want that tassel to be long and lovely, but I don't want it too loosey-goosey either. So just wrap the yarn as it would normally lay. Not too tight, not too loose, and keep it focused on the center of your cardboard. Now the pattern says to wrap it 60 times, and I know that you do not want me to wrap it 60 times on camera, <laughs> so here's one I did ahead of time. So you can see it's big and fat, and I have 60 wraps on there. All I'm going to do now is cut the yarn that's attached to the skein and leave it hanging. The next thing I'm going to do is cut a good long piece, maybe 15, 16 inches of the yarn so I can secure the top. All I need to do is get it under all of those wraps. See, I'm sliding it under and I'm pulling it to the very, very top and get it so the sort of the center of the yarn is right under the tassel and tie it very tightly at least twice. So one really tight. I'm using just an overhand knot, but I wanna make sure this doesn't fall apart when I take it off the cardboard. So make sure that first knot is really tight and then boom, make the second knot tight. Now the next thing I'm going to do is cut across the bottom. In the same way I got the yarn under the fold, I wanna get the scissor under the fold. You gotta get it all the way under there and as close to the edge as you possibly can. Just cut it across. Now, it doesn't matter if it's not completely perfect because you will even it up when you're done. Okay, now I can dispose of the cardboard. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to cut one more really long piece of yarn to finish off the top. Again, too long is easy. Too short is problematic. <laughs> so I'm holding my knot at the top and I want to keep those strands off to the side because I'm going to use those to attach the tassel to the scarf. I'm going to go maybe an inch and a half down, I'm going to leave some yarn hanging and I'm going to wrap right over my fingers at least twice but more is better. Two Let's do three or four. Three, four. Okay, and I tightened it up so that that top of that tassel puffs out very nicely. Now, I'm going to find the, the other end, the end I started with. And I'm going to cut off some excess just so it's easier to work with. And I'm going to cut, rather, I'm going to tie two knots. One, Two. Now all I need to do with those that excess yarn, I don't have to weave it in or anything crazy like that. I can just leave it hanging and neaten it up. So there's my tassel. Once again, keeping my strands that I'm going to attach with up to the top so I don't cut them, I can look at the bottom and just if anything's hanging out and makes me unhappy, and just trim it off with the scissors. Also, as you wear your scarf, because you're going to get a lot of wear out of this scarf, if the ends get a little ragged, you just trim them off. So there is our tassel for the simple, Keep It Simple Knit Super Scarf. So now I have this very cool tassel that I made, and I want to attach it to our Keep It Simple Knit Super Scarf. I have to tell you that tassel attachment is more of an art than a science, so I'm going to show you how I would do it but uh, if you find a different or better way, <laughs> knock yourself out. What you don't wanna have to do is to weave in 12 million ends. So we left that long strand on the top to attach with. I'm gonna grab the place where I want to attach the tassel and I'm just gonna stick a crochet hook in it. It doesn't matter what size crochet hook, I wanted a pretty sizable one because this is pretty thick yarn. 
So I'm going to pull it through and then I'm going to stick my crochet hook through the center of the tassel where we put the original strand. I'm going to pull it through. Again, if it's not exactly in the center, eh, not a big deal. You just want to get it through in there so it's uh, sturdy, sturdily attached. Okay, and then I'm going to pull it through one more time. This time I'm going to go this direction. Again, more art than science, the idea is merely that it's on there in a pretty sturdy fashion. And now to get rid of these extra ends, I'm going to try and hide them right in here. So I'm going to put the hook from bottom to top through the strand that is holding the top of the tassel together. And I'm going to pull it through. Not too tight. You don't want to pull too, too tight because you want it to be masked in there. You don't want it to show up. And then just to keep things safe and sturdy, one last time I'm going to go from bottom to top under that double wrapped strand and pull the loose edges in to secure that. Make them hang out nice. Okay, and they can just hang out inside the tassel and you'll never see the difference. If they're too long, if they're hanging out down here, just go back and trim them. So now my tassel is attached to my super scarf. Thanks so much for joining us.